Yeah, Lex, man, that's my early high school. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, here I am. I'm back. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about Egyptian history per se. Um, there's a guy, fortunately he's dead now because he'd be awfully old, and his name was Flinders Petrie. I can't help it. His name was Flinders Petrie. And it's to Flinders Petrie that we owe the standard periodization in Egyptian history. Um, he discovered a uh, stella, uh, which had a list of all the dynasties. And he took this list of dynasties, and really not arbitrarily, and you'll hear about this bef before too long, uh, he was able to discern certain periods in Egyptian history. And so that was fine, and for the better part of 100 years, there it was. When I took this class, if I had taken this class, I didn't take this class, uh, but if I had taken this class back in the 70s, um, Petrie's chronology would have been what was taught to me. Uh, but then this guy, which is not me in my high school picture, but this is King Catfish, which, you know, interesting enough was what they called me in high school, but that's a different story altogether, too. Um, or Narmer. Narmer, him, King Catfish is the same guy. They all have more than one name. Believe me, if we really did an Egyptian history class, we'd be here all term. Um, Narmer pops up, and so this guy is Dynasty Zero because Petrie didn't have him in. So let's just hope we don't find a guy before Narmer. Because if we do, I guess that's going to have to be dynasty negative one. Um, as you'd probably guess, we call this um, guy before the first dynastic period the pre-dynastic period, uh, which is somewhat confusing also because, of course, he's in a dynasty. But this gives us a little bit of insight into just how difficult ancient history can be. Um, Everything that I tell you, you have to realize it's not as if it's the United States history, the United States chronology of presidents where we've got names and dates and birth certificates and all of this. This is a whole different matter. We're sure this guy existed. We're sure he's important. We're sure he's a pharaoh. Um, why? Because of the hat, the headgear, it's a crown. This is Horus. This is a, uh, this is a god who's sort of telling him he's cool. You can see what he's doing. He's smashing this guy's heads in. So this is Pharaoh as warrior prince. If we look at this side, and by the way, this is the, just the obverse. This is one side. This is the other side of the same thing. Um, we can see all sorts of interesting stuff going on here. Here's a bunch of guys that he's already smashed their head in. You can see they've been beheaded, and they're just laying by the side here. Um, Pharaoh is painted way taller than everybody. He obviously wasn't that tall, but it was, you know, I'm the important guy, make me tall. Um, this is the vizier. This is probably his wife. These guys are all holding up um, banners that honor a particular god or goddess, or sometimes with these god and goddesses, we're not exactly sure what sex they are, but whatever. Um, and it's obviously a royal procession celebrating a great victory. Well, that sounds very cool. I guess it is. But honestly, that's about all we know about Narmer. He seems to have existed. Um, he, he, he's from Upper Egypt. We're sure of that. Does he manage to, real, to unite Lower and Upper Egypt? Well, that we're not sure of. And so that's probably why it's best to leave him in this pre-dynastic period and move on to the dynastic period. Um, the dynastic period itself, uh, well, it's about the old kingdom. Um, so when I say old kingdom, um, you know what we think about. Um, well, maybe you don't. Uh, but we think about pyramids. Uh, as strange as it may seem, the thing that we most associate with Egypt is one of the oldest of all things. Um, if you take a really good look at this image, you can get the idea of just how large these pyramids really are. Um, look at the size of these people down here. Uh, this was a structure that was built, oh, gee, um, 
45, 4,600 years ago. And right up until only about 700 years ago, it was the tallest structure in the world. And it was certainly the most massive structure in the world um, for much longer than that. Um, this is a tomb. Um, this particular tomb is from the old kingdom pharaoh named Khufu, uh, K-H-U-F-U, -U, Khufu. Um, like most everything else in Egyptian history, it's a little complicated. Um, you can also call him Cheops, C-H-E-O-P-S, Cheops. Um, Cheops is his Greek name, so obviously the Egyptians didn't call him Khufu. Uh, we're not actually sure how the Egyptians would have pronounced what we think is Khufu, but we're going to go with that. Um, Khufu, Khufu is an old kingdom, fourth dynasty guy. Um, he and his immediate predecessors and successors built pyramids, uh, but it is the great pyramids of Giza that we remember most. Um, after Khufu, pyramids get smaller. This is 130 meters tall. The, the next pyramid after him was 67 meters tall. Big, big difference. Not exactly sure why. Um, for the longest time, we used to say, well, these pyramids were made by slave labor. You know, oh, the pharaohs enslaved these guys and treated them very poorly. The archaeological evidence for today shows that this is simply not true. Behind me now, we see the lovely Sphinx. Very interesting thing. It tells us a little bit about the gods of Egypt. Uh, the gods, as I say, sometimes are they male, are they female? You can't always tell. Um, sometimes um, are they part, well, what are they, part lion and something? Well, yes. So this is a part lion, part man. Um, the good news for the Egyptians was that unlike this thing back here, they didn't have to cart the rocks. This big stone was just sitting nearby, and so they carved it out of the stone. The Sphinx is one of those, you know, riddle of the Sphinx, mystery of the Sphinx. Not exactly sure why they did it. Um, it might have just been a neat thing to do. Um, the people who were building these things were pretty well paid. They were given free medical care. They were paid mostly, oddly enough, in beer. Um, you don't think about Egyptian beer that much, as, as Egypt is now a Muslim country. Uh, but the Egyptians pioneered beer making. And if you're wondering what they just drank, well, no. I mean, they could sell their beer. You know, that way they could, they were paid in kind, but then they could trade it for other things. Um, the, the pyramid making mania did not last very long. We're not exactly sure why these massive structures were abandoned for smaller structures, but they were. We're not exactly sure whether the Egyptians get this idea from the Mesopotamians or the Mesopotamians get this idea from the Egyptians. We think it's a Mesopotamian idea that the Egyptians copy, but to a great extent it doesn't matter. It's a very short period of time. It's what we remember the Old Kingdom for. Remember why Old Kingdom? Because under these five dynasties, Upper and Lower Egypt were all ruled by the same guy. And that guy generally lived somewhere near Thebes. Well, all things must pass, and so at the Old Kingdom. What follows is something called the First Intermediate Period. We're not exactly sure what the First Intermediate Period is about, uh, except that we know that there is no unity between Upper and Lower Egypt. There are two dynasties, the 6th and the 7th dynasty, but they do not, they rule at the same time. They are not able to control the whole place. We're not sure why things fall apart, but we are sure they did. And when we come back, we'll enter into a new period, a really an Egyptian golden age, and I'll talk about that in just a minute.